Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I present the Mini Q, which is a small version of the Maru Q. Uh, for comparison, let's get out the Maru Q. Uh, this is meant to be a lander for Mars in particular, but originally we had the Maru Q, which has a Mars version as well as a lunar version. And the Maru Q, if I can sort of stick it on here for a more direct sort of comparison, is huge and was sort of cumbersome to deal with as a result. So this is the body of it. And uh, we'll get the nose as well. And actually the fact that the cabin came as a separate part was also a part of the issue. So there we have a good comparison between the two. Uh, the cabin was actually two floors if we peek in here. Uh, you can see there's a floor in between the two. There's a upper floor with the cockpit and all and a lower floor. And so this is actually sort of like the shuttle, basically. Whereas the Mini-Q, Mini or Miku for short, uh, because Mini-Q is going to be a little bit difficult. And besides, Miku has the number letter correspondence. It would be 39, uh, also a reference. But uh, the Miku is... Uh, related to the cabin of the Taurus space plane, not that one, uh, this one. Actually, uh, they share the same cabin anyway, uh, but should be a little bit further forward. So right about there, we get a sense that these two are sort of equivalent cabins. There's more uh, window space there, and the Miku is sloped back a little bit more, but it's basically the same deal. So. It doesn't have as much space, but it still has room for four astronauts. So, yeah, the Maru Q was built around a much larger hold. It was a four meter diameter cargo hold with, I think it was 20 meters in length. And so that's a pretty big cargo hold. The problem was I never found a good way to use it except to stuff it with fuel because we really needed a lot of fuel to have this do its job. And so, with the Miku or Mini Q, uh, we instead have a much smaller hold, and we already have it stuffed with stuff. Um, that stuff is built in. In particular, we have the extra tanks added in already, and we also have an ISR unit. So you might notice the vent up here. That's to take in the CO2, and unfortunately, it's not animated right now. Uh, but we also have the two ISR units, which are side by side there. And that's why you might have noticed humongous solar panels. Because we, uh, with the ISR units that I had before, these, there's NC2 resource utilization. This is to drill for uh, resources at the location, in this case Mars, and convert it to fuel. With these NC2 resource utilization units that I had before, uh, we had a nuclear reactor. That's that little bit there. And then we have the ISR unit here. Well, the problem with that is, this is a crude vehicle. We can't really have a nuclear... I mean, we could. I mean, after all, nuclear submarines have nuclear reactors on them. Uh, but I didn't think it was a good idea. Oh, I didn't think people would like it. So, I don't mind, personally, but uh, yeah, I didn't think people would like it. So, big solar panels. And that is to power the ISR unit. You can see the drills that we have on the side there, which are conveniently at the center mass. We'll remove the Maru Q for now. Well, for permanently. And so the drills are very close to the center mass. You notice the solar panels are arrayed around the center of mass. Uh, the engines are, of course, around the center of mass. And this is so that the center mass doesn't change. With the Maru Q, we had the cabin and the body separate. And as a result, as the fuel drained, the center mass changed quite a lot. Uh, because this is just one part now, at least the body portion of it, uh, the center mass shouldn't change so much and cause me problems like that. Uh, so, yeah, we of course have to have the center of thrust being very close to center mass. This is probably a little bit too far off as it is, but uh, as we, even though I tried, as we uh, drain the propellant, it goes up like that. So when we're close to outer propellant, it's like this. So, yeah, that's wonderful. But anyway, it's pretty close. You might notice the wingage back here, and that is to make sure that the center of lift is behind the center of mass. Uh, there is some aerodynamics involved. There is body lift I put on to the body because it would have, as it has a little bit of body lift. If we take those off, the center of lift 
goes too far forward, you see. Uh, so we need to have those. Otherwise, it won't be stable. So, so we do. And so there's a lot going into this business. Now, having it all the same part means that the upper hatch there opens at the same time as this one. Uh, that's not great. Also, uh, the textures in the cockpit didn't work out quite right. Uh, you can see some weird business here. So I'll need to. I tried to just use the same textures that we had for the internals of the Taurus space plane, but for some reason uh, that didn't work quite right there. So I'll have to figure that out. But there's a lot to figure out with this. This is 1.12. I haven't done drilling in 1.12. I did put a resource scanner around Mars. I just cheated it there. But we don't have the overlay working, apparently. Now I've restarted. Maybe we do. Let me save this and I'll show you. Uh, so I don't know if we're going to be able to test the fact that it can drill and replenish its fuel, whether we can test that or not. Uh, we are just going to cheat it into orbit around Mars and at least try to land it on Mars. So taking a look, we still have the resource scanner around Mars. And we'll just hop to it. This is all a test in 1.12 still. I'm not doing anything serious in 1.12 except for testing things. So yeah, we've got the resource scanner. And we can. I've already done the scan. The toggle overlay doesn't work. And we can see the cutoff is really low right now. And if we go here in the usual way, focus on Mars, select the ore. Well, it's not showing ore. It shows a 6.1% cutoff, but it's not showing any of these resources. I'll have to figure out what to do about that later. So we can't really verify where to land in order to get ore in this version right now. So that's a problem. But I do want to see if everything is stable on landing. We've got the center of lift, center of mass issue. We've got the center of thrust issue. So, well, that's that's enough issues to be getting along with. We do have a control point available. That's this docking port. Otherwise, it'd be controlling from the front. Uh, but the docking port allows us to control from the top. But it's not centered on the center of mass, you know. So that might be a problem going forward. Now, there are a few other innovations here. Uh, like the Maruku, of course, we have the engine blocks that have the nozzles tilting like there. Though that one looks like it might hit the, the which we got uh, drill. But uh, I mean with the thrust. But yeah, uh, they tilt like the Harrier basically. But I don't think we need to. I don't know if Mars is, has an atmosphere thick enough that it matters whether we sort of go up like this or whether we have to use the skis. Uh, these skis are the ones that prop, uh, that can prop you up. Uh, if I can click on them, there we go. Uh, prop it up so that it can uh, launch like this. But then really we shouldn't be using the top engines. I don't have tail engines right now even though I have the space for them. I think we'll just go up like, like this. Another innovation. We have better solar panels. So with Realism Overhaul, they have uh, different solar panel levels uh, in their solar configuration. They have uh, levels 0 through 7, and 7 is modern era solar panels. They don't even have a provision for advanced solar panels beyond the modern era. Level 7 is modern era, level 6 is the ISS era, level 5, 1990s, level 4, 1980s, and so forth. But by default, the solar panels you get, the best ones you can get are level 4 which means they're 1980s solar panels, uh, which is, well, this is why I created RP2000, because apparently people aren't thinking about the future very much. But uh, so I, of course, I had to implement level seven solar panels, modern era solar panels. So I created this modern era solar panels part and I didn't change any numbers or anything. All I did was say, hey, this is supposed to be a level seven solar panel. So it's the exact same part as this one, but based on their level seven configuration, again, I didn't pick it or anything. It's the same area, 13 square meters. And here we get 2.67 kilowatts. This one gets 3.91, but perhaps more importantly, this is a mass of 0 0.0683 tons. This one is basically 12.5 kilograms or about a fifth of the mass of this one. So 
we have the level 7 ones here, the modern era solar panels. They're scaled up, and because we have to power the ISR unit and the drills and everything, and Mars, you know, doesn't have as much sun as usual, uh, these all combined uh, at Mars apoapsis uh, would be 18 kilowatts. At Mars periapsis, about 25 kilowatts or 26 kilowatts. It's still rough. So the ISR unit that's built in here actually only produces one third at the rate. At the, uh, it produces at a rate of one third what the other ISR units that I showed before do. And I don't know whether that's got to be enough or not. But at least we're doing methane and oxygen instead of hydrogen and oxygen. So we've got these ISR units. So what's built into this only does a third of what these did. But that's probably good to save on the dry mass of it. Maybe we can... I mean, but we're pretty low on the dry mass anyway. If we were going to try to build the full deal with those ISR landers in, we would probably have to add more dry mass than we have here right now. So, yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep it light, and this is what we've got. So, you'll note the Delta V is like this. The Delta V really is more like 3,843, but I'm not actually sure whether that's got to be enough to bring this into orbit around Mars. It's really tight. Um, it is not a cargo vessel anymore, because we filled the hold, and really I don't want to put anything except for a small rover in the tail. Uh, this is really just a crew vessel to bring four people down. And the benefit of this is that it can replenish its own fuel. So it doesn't need some other ISRU system that it has to land at. That's the plus side. So I'm going to have it half filled. And we'll see how that works out. That means that it, when it would transfer to Mars, it would be launching at a mass of 28.92 tons, let's say. It doesn't have parachutes to help it land, it has to use just its engines, but we're hoping that its engines will do the trick. And yeah, at 28.92 tons, uh, it can be launched by SLS over to Mars pretty easily. Uh, of course, it, once it's fully fueled, which you'll only do when it's on the surface of Mars, then it'll weigh more. But yes, let us just have it half, fill, half full and then get over there. Okay. So I've set it to a 15 degree inclination, and we'll try and land on the daylight side. So let's just retro burn now. Let's verify that we can retro burn. So we are going to control from up here, pass through docking port. The RCS works. I mean, this is a new model, so we do have to verify the RCS as well. Okay, what direction do we settle the fuel down? Oh, there we go. Okay, well, we have some problems, don't we? Oh, that's why the thrall didn't work, because the fuel wasn't settled. Okay, well, that should do the trick, right? There's a lot of vapor and feed lines. Is it because of my control orientation that it's a little bit confused about where the fuel is? Because we're thrusting pretty definitively in this direction. The thrusters are pointed in this direction, but maybe it doesn't understand that? I mean, the fuel should be settling in this situation. There we go. Hmm. Now the fuel can't get unsettled while they're firing, right? Okay, well that's good enough for now. Well, it does worry me though. Heat shielding is an issue. I've tried to hide the solar panels behind the body. Mars doesn't do a whole lot of heat. And it's just a matter of needing to slow down. You need a certain amount of drag. I mean, as long as we're already in orbit. Oh, now we can see the stripes. So we can only see the resource scanner results when we're in the atmosphere? That seems like not a good idea, does isn't it? <laughs> I mean, we can't see it from map view, but we can see it in the atmosphere. Well, there seems to be a lot of resources around here. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to do about that. Um, okay, well, I turned it off anyway. Uh, the line there 
something is clearly wrong with the scatter configuration for Mars. Uh, what a surprise. Anyway. It has built-in fuel cells as well. Uh, just in case we're in the dark and we need to drill or whatever. There's a life support fuel cell that produces 7 kilowatts, which I'll activate now. That's why we have a little bit of liquid hydrogen here. But there's also a mega fuel cell that uh, provides 35 kilowatts and, of course, consumes the commensurate amount of hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, but that uh, would only be used for supplementing the, drill, uh, the electricity for the drilling units and the ISRU. I wonder what's using the water. This shows a water consumption. I mean, we should have water production from that fuel cell. I don't know what's consuming water, actually. Oh, we're using a lot of yaw there. Which is... Probably mean... I mean, I don't know. Do I need a vertical stabilizer then? Maybe. Either that or the fancy starship fin arrangement. Didn't really expect that. But it's really maxing out that yaw. And pitch. Uh-oh. Well, okay. Well, this is obviously not the orientation I want here. I think maybe we need the center of lift a little bit closer to the center of mass than what we've got. And it's a little bit further away, which just means reducing the size of these things. I don't know if uh, increasing... Maybe we can make them all... Well, we can't make it all moving because of the shape of the body, actually. Okay, well... Try to slow down a bit. But this is, this is probably not going to work. <laughs> we also aren't slowing down quickly enough. I thought we would get... More, well, we would get more drag if we weren't tilted like this. This is not going to work. Canards? Maybe we should put canards as well. I don't think we're getting as much drag as this ought to get. I mean, of course, it doesn't have the far module on the body. So, I don't know. Um, let's see if we can adjust the center of lift a little bit by moving, uh, by putting some canards on. We'll just do canards. And we'll have all moving canards. So, I, I, this is actually the first time I, I think I'm using the B9 procedural wings in 1.12, and the dialogue is actually different. I think people have had some questions about it. It sort of tucks things in sometimes. I actually don't know where the color one is on these all moving control surfaces on the wing piece I think there was a color one but a color sort of section but yeah I don't, I don't see how to change the color on this one I think somebody mentioned having trouble with that Initially, I put them in the back because the body was dragging the center lift forward. Now we've got canards. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, it's still not as far forward as I would like. Well, the center of mass seems to be further back than I expected, so I'm going to move the drill there. Those aren't very heavy, though. Center of thrust is a little bit back. I also don't know whether that's going to be a good thing or not. Okay, well, anyway. Let us see. 
We sure weren't producing enough thrust to make things happen, though. Slow down, I mean. Alright, well... This time... Oh, vapor and felines. Right. Well. See, now, I don't understand that. <laughs> but, uh, okay, let's try that again. I'll just... These are pretty powerful RCS ports, too. They shouldn't take any time at all to settle the fuel down. It just must be confused about the orientation of it. I don't know. I don't know why it's having a problem here. I don't think it likes the rotating engine ports. Okay, well, that's a serious periapsis. Probably more serious than I was looking for. I mean, I guess we just need to start slowing down three minutes before landing. I mean, there's no reason to save any fuel. We want to be as light as possible on landing. So we'll just use landing guidance there, or maybe suicide burn countdown and see. I don't think suicide burn countdown is going to help much. And we'll just go flat. No, no tilt. Well, the time to land is going down. I'm gonna try firing the engines right now. That'll certainly reduce the time to land very quickly. I mean, the suicide burn countdown also goes down dramatically like this, so... Yeah, probably this is a good bet to start out right now. We really only need the atmosphere to do like a thousand meters per second for us or something like that. Again, we're not coming in from entry into the Mars system, we're coming down from a low Mars orbit. Well, that's suicide burn countdown though. <laughs> It's getting a bit worse. Well, we should get drag, which will help, but right now it's not being very optimistic about it, is it? Gotta say, the overall tint on Mars seems awful bright. Surely the atmosphere can do something. Oh, but our pitch is going bad. Oh, no. Well, it doesn't look like... Are those things even controlling anything? Just maximize what they can do. I don't know. They don't look like they're actuating at all to me. I I don't know if uh, if B nine procedural wings is working in one point twelve at least as far as these surfaces actually doing stuff. Let, let's just uh, confine it to pitch. The ones in the back don't seem to be doing anything either. I noticed that last time too. This thing is also not getting much drag, is it? Which is peculiar. It should be slowing down more than this. It's not. It's a pretty big surface. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what aerodynamics is going on here. Um. I saw just right at the end there a reference area of 15 meters squared. Well, this is definitely more than 15 meters squared. This is this is a lot more than 15 meters squared. So, for some reason, FAR thinks that it's only 15 meters squared hitting the atmosphere. We might have a problem there. But, that might be because there's no FAR module on this, but then, that's not an excuse, is it? Uh, I mean, our length is 17.6 meters, and our width is, well, that probably includes the wingage. And our width is about 6 meters without the wings. So, yeah, okay, well, anyway, that's the mini cube for now. I'm gonna have to think about this, and maybe you can give suggestions on what to do about this. Um, clearly not working out quite right, and it has promise, but... Maybe I should try it out in 1.8.1 first instead and see if it works there because 1.12 I'm still coming to grips with.
but yep anyway this has been the, the initial testing of the mini q and with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time